Hey everyone, welcome to another Social Cafe Hangout. And tonight we have Gail. And Gail is going to give us a walkthrough, another one on Canva, specifically for ads for social advertising. So Gail, go ahead and take it away. Okay everyone, by popular demand we're doing Canva again. And you guys probably remember we looked at it before. And so hopefully you can see the Canva screen. It's kind of like green at the top. And says Canva with a little purple, I guess that's a B under it. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, beta edition, that's what that's for. All right, so we're already logged in. You can tell by looking right here, it says it's got my name, so it knows I'm logged in. And before we use the custom dimensions, well, Canva has added a lot more already canned sizes for Twitter posts, social media, presentations. See, that one says new on it. If you scroll quite a ways to the right, you'll see that there are Facebook uh, options. So we've got Facebook ad, Facebook post, and Facebook app. And so if you were making a, an image that was specifically for a Facebook post, you would use this option. But if you're going to make an image specifically for a Facebook ad, you're going to use this option. And so when we click on that, it opens in another tab. And it takes a long time to load. And this is the size already made for you. And as I told you last time, you cannot change the size in Canva. You could download it and edit it in something else. But once you choose the size, that's the size you've got. So choose the size for sure. And then this is your space. And we talked about last, last um, week that when you do ads for Facebook, the number one tip that I got from someone whose job that is, it's all this company does is Facebook ads, is that they believe you should have people's faces in your ad. And so if you look at search here, you could actually search for people and see what they've got in there. And so if you had an ad, for example, so I, I wouldn't really use a whole person, even though that would be good, you, because you want faces on Facebook. And so if you put something over there you don't like, you can just click the, the trash. You usually want to use Facebook people's faces, just their face. Now, it's possible that you're not going to find the pictures that you want in Canva, so you may have to go and get some pictures somewhere else and you click upload and you just upload them from your computer. But here's one, we've got a picture, it's got some faces on it. And notice that it's got X's on top of it. I'm actually going to make it bigger. So you just point at the corners and you can drag it to the size that's bigger. Alright, so I'm going to put it on one side like that. Alright, so it's got X's on it and it says Canva on it. So this is what you'd have to pay a dollar for. But if you wanted to sell something related to computers for some reason, you could actually use that photo and then you could put some um, text on it. You'd probably want to make it smaller. And I just want to give you an idea. You have layouts, text, backgrounds, and uploads. So backgrounds is colors, like that. You can keep the design and change the color by clicking on it. See, any color you want. Any color colors that are in there or click the plus and then you get this circle and you can pick any color find the one you like and if you decide you don't like it you can trash that text is easy if you click add text you're gonna get a box that always pops into the middle and this is test text just have to tell it something and so after I click off of it, I can drag that anywhere I want. If I want to edit it, I can click on it again, change the uh, fonts, change the size, change the color, make the text any color you want. See? Plus, you can make it any, any wild color you want. Okay? And so that's how you choose everything you want. you think it would change it. It is. Usually it changes. I don't know why it's not. It could be because we're doing screen sharing. Screen sharing uses a lot of computer resources, and so that could be why. Remember, there's three kinds of text. So this one, I just want to show you. 
medium size. So there's your medium size, and here's your small. And so you can do them separate. You can wrap the text. You can type more than one line. So you could be typing there, and then you put you could go second line, second line. And you notice I'm still in the big text here. And then you can drag it around, drag the little one down. And so that's what makes this so easy. You can also, after you download the image and you use it and you realize you had a mistake, you can just come back in here, choose the image again, and correct it, and then download it again. That's the coolest thing because that's not how the text, the graphics image editors work that I normally use. On those, if you make a mistake and you have to correct it, you have to find the layer, and I have never figured out that layer thing. So one thing to remember on the text thing is you can also drag and drop these pre-made um, sections here. And so I'm going to actually make this smaller. And so you can play with things. You can drag them off the edge and leave it, and this part won't, won't be on your image. And you can click on these and, and type over the words that are on them. So if you see something cool in here that you like, that you want to use, see a lot of these are free. This one's free. And you can drag and drop those over there. All right. And so background, we talked about layouts are these, like, fancy backgrounds. Oh, and that's something to remember. When you put a background on, it actually got, gets rid of everything you had. Let's see what happens. I'm starting to figure out if I delete it, if it's going to put back what I had. Apparently not. So that is something to remember. If you're going to use a background, use it first, and don't apply a background after you've put anything there or you're going to lose stuff. I'm trying to get back to those backgrounds. Can you Can use you an use undo? I don't think there is an undo. Mm, nope. Filter copy for it. I do have filters, by the way. If you're really snazzy and you know how to do fancy stuff, you can do the filter thing, like grayscale stuff. And so they have different colors. Like that's normal. One was that's normal, and that's drama. And I don't know how fast the screen's changing, so this may not be a good idea. Um, uploads. You want to remember this is where you can put pictures. Now, I'm going to get rid of the background, I hope. Trash, there we go. And you see I already have pictures in here. So there's Andy Lapata. So let's say that what I want to promote is Andy's new book. I could put Andy's picture on there. And then I could put text. And I could just pick that. And I could put, let's see if I can do this. Maybe I can't. Yeah, I can. Get. There we go. It's probably not going to fit because his book's got a long word in it. Get recommended. And then he's got it's got a subtitle. So you put the subtitle in here. All right. So remember the last week I told you the best thing I ever heard anybody doing was when Gary V published his new book. He had testimonials from very well-known people on the cover. And he would target the people that liked them. So he targeted all the people that liked Seth Godin with a photo of Seth Godin and had the testimonial for his book right here that Seth had written. It said Seth's testimonial and Seth's picture promoting his book to Seth's followers. And so everybody that likes Seth is probably going to listen to him. And so basically he turned Seth's um, testimonial on his book into a Facebook ad recommending that Seth's followers buy his book. So if you can do anything brilliant like that, you should get very good results. Now, I know we're talking about images, but remember, Facebook ads, you want to make sure you target them very well or you're going to lose money on them. The reason that they are, they're worth testing is that you can pick very specific things. If you can target the audience you know you want to sell to, you can make money especially if you do great ads. And we talked about this last, last week. The way that a professional person would do it is they would test different photos, different text, different colors. They might make 10 different ads, run a, 
a few impressions, you know, not spend very much money, spend a little tiny bit of money on each one, see which one gets the most clicks, then kind of swap them around, like if you had three that really worked, and they all had the same photo, you know, well, that's the best photo, but let's say they all had different text, then you could test different text. Find the one that gets the most clicks before you spend very much money on your ads. Um, one other thing to remember, a lot of people will run ads on Facebook for the targeting to get an ad that really pulls and then use that ad on other places like LinkedIn or on your own blog or anywhere that you could do remarketing. Um, I should mention what remarketing is. Remarketing is, you know how you go to a site and then every site you go to it seems like there's an ad for that site you went to? that's remarketing and so you those people contracted with a company it's called a remarketer and they gave them an ad in various different sizes and when you go to other sites that contract with that company you get to see those ads and so remarketing is a really great idea that that is how Anita Campbell from Small Biz Trends told me that she or she told our group that she grew small um, biz sugar really big by using remar retargeting. I think it's called retargeting and remarketing, two different terms for basically the same thing. So any questions, uh, anything in particular you want me to, to talk about, Deb? I was muted. I was, back. <laughs> I was trying to tweet what you just said. On the uh, the Seth Godin example, and so instead I just said, you really want it to make sense, you got to come watch this live and like rewind this YouTube in here because that is so brilliant. The last two examples that you gave on things that anybody could do, it wouldn't, it have, wouldn't to have to be a book or a product. I mean, the idea of of targeting the followers of a testimonial giver, that's brilliant. Right. I mean. I'll give you another example that bloggers could identify with. Say that I am promoting, I'm an affiliate of Christy Hines' blog promotion guide. I could target people who like Christy with an ad selling her guide. I mean, you know, she probably does that, or but she may not be doing it right now. I mean, think of, you have to think of who, who would you buy from? Whose recommendation would you accept that would make you want to buy something. And that's how Facebook got in trouble. Did you know Facebook? Facebook got in trouble because they were using the Facebook users' photos as implied endorsements in ads. So if you were a Facebook user and you didn't opt out and you didn't know you needed to opt out, right, they might advertise a product for a big brand, stick your picture on it, and show it to your friends and family. And they got sued. People didn't like that very much. Um, it's rather misleading because you might not even have ever heard of that brand or maybe you hate that brand, but your face shows up next to that brand in ads. They were actually, they were actually doing that? Yeah, they actually did that. Not for very long, though, because someone sued them pretty fast about that, that, they, that didn't like that. But, um, yeah, we need to think out of the box. Um, if we're going to promote something, who are we promoting it to? what kind of faces. Um, one thing I want to mention that this isn't so much about social media, but have you ever noticed that on commercials the people are what I would call ethnically ambiguous? Um, you know what I mean by that, Deb? Ethnically, ethnically ambiguous. Right. You can't okay. tell. They're, they're not really, they're not really Caucasian or, you know, you can't tell. I think they use somebody that everyone can identify with and one way they can do that is by using someone who doesn't really look like any particular nationality so that hopefully they appeal to a wide demographic. I didn't realize I didn't they were doing that. that. Yeah, start paying attention. Watch the commercials and you'll see. You can tell who each commercial is targeted at. Like some, ta some they're targeted to specific demographics. So like some kinds of ads they use older people. Like you have um, ads for particular prescription pharmaceuticals will have older couples in them. Yep. Right? There's some ad, I'm trying to think what it is. I don't remember what Jericho? it advertises. No. 
<laughs> something to do with being older and you're ne you only need it when you're older or something. Or Metamucil. Or Metamucil. Or <laughs> yeah, so, so you want to think about that. Whoever your target audience is, when you choose the photo to put in your ad, you want to use someone that's in that group of people. Right? So if you're selling wedding stuff, you might put a woman with a, in a wedding dress or a veil on your photo. Makes sense. Or if you're selling games to a particular age group, you would put people in that age group in there. If it's the time of year for a particular seasonal product, you would put people dressed in that kind of attire that relates to what you're selling. And so That's we, we just have to marketing. marketing. Right. And, and one of the coolest things, too, is like now everybody watches that big football game just to watch the ads sometimes. Some but people don't even watch football. They just want to see the ads, the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. There's, you can learn a lot by looking up posts for, and YouTube videos, too, for failed ads and funny ads and ads that, that really worked. That's a very common topic that people in the ad industry like to write about. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have examples of great ads versus horrible ads. And there's some really funny um, flops, a, a lot of times related to difference, cultural differences or language differences, like a word, the brand that they chose, that word means something in another country that's not flattering. Isn't that like Coca-Cola? In China, yeah, China they the wrong word. Word. yeah, there's been some famous examples of, of choosing the wrong word for your brand that didn't come across with the in the context you would, would have preferred. And so you can learn a lot by looking at those ads. Also look up on on Pinterest. I have a, a board that's got color, how the colors affect people. Like you orange and black that? is authority and blue is you know, is a good color. Some colors are not good for selling things. Some colors are not as good for trusting. And so you can actually look. There's a lot of infographics. If you look at my Pinterest.com slash grow map, um, I have an infographics board. And I think I also have a color board. And you can actually look and see how colors impact. And you want to test different colors on your ads, on all of your images. The colors you choose will make a difference. If they really stand out, you'll get more attention. And certain colors, you know, impact psychologically on, on how people perceive them and what they do about them. Oh, I'm going to tweet out, out your infographics. Your infographics. Okay. And we also want to say you have to have a call to action on your ad. Right? So you need an image, usually a face for Facebook. And you need what do you want them to do. It has to be very clear. If it's not clear why that ad is sitting there, they will do nothing. And so if you're going to make ads, the ad should say, click, go look at, view it, join, free. It should say something. It has to tell them what you want them to do. And so start paying attention. When you see those ads that we all tune out going by on Facebook, start paying attention to what they actually say and, and kind of pay attention to which ones make you want to do something. And then that will help you make better ads for yourself. Good advice. Good advice. I also I like to look at it works for me. For me. So, so like if I'm going, going through my email, email and, and so much so email, email but something, something makes me actually want to open it. Open it. What made what? me open it? Yeah, you can look at your email because a lot of people test those. You can also look at, we talked about on Twitter, there's the, the pound discover thing at the top. Go, go click discover. Get in the habit of clicking discover and retweeting some good stuff from some famous people so they notice you. But also, just to get an idea, like sometimes I'll think, you know, I don't like that picture, but what does that mean? And then if it makes you open it because you, you wonder what it means, you know, and it doesn't always work. Sometimes we have to fake it. Like I did a, a post for Social Media Today recently, and I put social media on, alone is not enough. And if I had been able to format the post, I would have realized that I would have one word on the second line and I wouldn't have left it that way. I would have made the title longer. But, but that title, I think, made people wonder, well, okay, what? 
what is that about? Social media is not enough. What does that mean? Does that mean, what does that mean? So I'm hoping that's why people are clicking on it, and it's up to 100 and some tweets now. And so, you know, you don't always know how things are going to work, but get in the habit of clicking on Discover on Twitter, scrolling through there, and notice what attracts your eye. Like right now, Brian Fanzo has a big image that just says orange on it. You go, orange? And then it has to do with um, feeding children, making sure kids don't go hungry. But the orange really stands out, and so you notice that. And so, it made me wonder. What? It made me wonder. Made like me orange. Orange. It just says orange. You say orange what? And so basically you can scroll through there, see what words jump out at you, see what pictures jump out at you. Same thing on Pinterest. Go to Pinterest. Notice how many of the images you ignore and which ones you pay attention to. And that's how you can get better and better at creating your own images. Even if you're not running ads, you want the image that's in your post. When it gets shared, you want it to get attention. You want people to actually come and read your blog. If you have a business, you want to get those people to your site. And so, you know, pay attention. Share your images on Facebook, on Google+, on Pinterest, and Twitter, and see do they stand out from all the other images. And if they do, then you're likely to get more interaction than if they don't. If they blend into the background, nobody pays any attention. Good point. Good point. I've definitely been paying more attention to the media. On Twitter. on Twitter. Oh, I wanted to mention that on Canva, on their blog, there is a post called How to Design Facebook Ads that Get Results. It's at blog.canva.com slash how to design Facebook ads with dashes between it. Um, it's a very comprehensive post, got a lot of good information in it, and I will tweet that out to everybody in a little bit. Um, so remember that the information is out there. Anything that you want to know, you can do a search. Like the way I found this post is I, I typed in Facebook ads Canva and I got this post. And so there it is. Now one thing to remember when you down, you just download, you got your image the way you want it, you click download and right then if you have used any of the things that cost money like if I click on download and I've used anything that costs money, it's going to tell me right here. And if it doesn't, then it's it's just going to download it and give it to me. And then I can upload it anywhere I want. And but so actually, actually, you don't, you don't put like a put credit, like a credit card. card. It just, um, won't just yes. won't work. Well, okay, let me explain. That was my image I had uploaded. This is an image that's free. It's in there right there. It says free. Okay, so let me, I'll, I'll actually show you one that's, that costs money, if I can find one. Usually I find lots of them. Now I've got all free ones. All right, look. People. All right, I'm going to delete that. See all these? These people cost money. That person costs a dollar. All right. So now you have to, by the way, let it sit for a minute because it only auto-saves periodically. If you try to download too fast, it'll just tell you you have to wait. Now I'm going to click image and there it is right there. It says the tennis player is $1, your total is $1, special offer $10 for 11 images, you save a dollar, or just pay the dollar and you put in your credit card number, expiration date, and CBC code. And so you must have a credit card. I, I would hope that a debit card that has Visa or MasterCard on it would probably work, but I don't know that for sure. I do know they do not take PayPal, which is obvious right here. But you'll know um, when you're using an image, see how it's got Canva on there? It's, water, it's watermarked Canva. Okay, so you could actually conceivably put multiple images in there. Let me put that one in there and that one in there. It's actually the same one probably, but I don't care. Okay, so I'm going to put three in there, and I'm going to click download, and I'm going to click image. And now, see, now it's $3. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's how that works. It's really easy to use. And when you go out of it and you go back in, your designs are down here. Okay, so when I'm logged in, if I scroll down, I can actually pull up ads that I've previously made or in any kind of image I've previously made. And this is to remind you guys, vote for me. 
This is actually <laughs> pinned to the top of my Twitter right now. So if you go to I'm go not laughing. I'm not laughing. Uh, yeah, I'm lobbying. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, and it also reminds me that Liz Strauss, who is very well known and and started SOB Con, which doesn't sound for, stand for what you think it does. It stands for um, oh dear, successful, outstanding bloggers. And Christy Hines are both also nominated. And so I actually have a post where you can actually go and vote for everybody. I've got their links right in there, so you can just click on them. So definitely okay, tweet that. Post with Cafe. Um, tweet which one? Tweet the link so we can go tweet vote for you. Tweet the link so we can go for you. Oh, the voting link. It's pinned to the top of my Twitter. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so you can't miss it. If you just go click on Grow Map, and you should see it, and it would it would not have me logged in, right? That'd be too easy. Oh, and I don't remember what my password is. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, so if you go to my if you go click on Grow Map, it will come up, and it's right here. And this is a post I wrote where if you want to vote for all of us, you can go there, or you can just click right there and go vote for me. And I am going to right now tweet you this um, this link I talked about uh, for Canva. Okay, so I put the title in there so you guys don't wonder what the heck the link's for in case it shortens it. And I'm going to put Social Cafe on there. And there you go. So now everybody's going to have that link to that good information on Canva about how to design Facebook ads. It actually goes into a lot of depth on what to do, like how to use graphics, include a call to action, overlaying text, which we kind of talked about, logos and icons, images with filters. I briefly mentioned that they are filters. And um, multiple images, which I showed you how to do. You can drag them and drop them and resize them. People like people. That's the tip I keep saying. I've been told that if you're making a Facebook ad, put a face in it, at least one. And so this is a really great post, very long, has all kinds of details in it. And we're back to Deb. I'm going to put me up uh, to vote for you. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's rainy. I can hear the little pitter patter. Can you hear that rain? Okay, I went and did that and then I didn't put social cafe. So now there are two tweets on the social web cafe Twitter feed that point you over to go vote for Gail Gromap. So no excuse. And Gail, you yeah, won an you award. Won award. Uh, yeah, I or I won an an influencer award in a previous year. Yes. yes. So let's, so let's help, let's help, help again. again. Yeah, we at least not. We I just didn't want to be embarrassed and get no votes. I don't know who nominated me. Maybe Small Biz Trends did, but I thought I should at least get a few votes and make people know I'm still out here. No, <laughs> sorry. We we should do jam sessions on Hangout on Airs. You guys could like get musicians together, like that really cool video. Have you ever seen what is the name of that video? There's a video where there's musicians all over the world playing the same song. It's fantastic. Oh, that is cool. Oh, as long as it's not a cover. No, it's the jam. Well, there yeah. was a cover. Theirs was a cover. But no, yours is going to be the song that I got your husband working on, the Algorithm Blues. There we go. There I like that. that. Great idea. Great idea. So any musicians so watching, watching this? this? Contact Ava, so either Gail or me, so we can do a, a musical yeah. jam. And thank you, everybody, yeah, thank you everybody for joining for another joining Social Cafe, Cafe Twitter chat, Twitter and, chat and, and, and we'll see and you, we'll next, see you week. next week. Thanks, Gail. Thanks, Gail. Anytime. Bye, everyone.